Welcome, welcome back to another episode of Uploaded and Unfiltered, the podcast in which I, your host Jermaine, interviews another content creator in regards to their journey thus far. Tonight, as always, I have a special guest. I'm going to go ahead and read his bio and get him introduced so we can have a lovely conversation tonight. My guest for tonight is I'm One Hero. With his content, you find a home for gaming and entertainment with a dash of positivity, humor, and originality. Hero is the number one hero in gaming, streamer, content creator, video editor, community manager, founder of Super Dope Duper, writer, and musician. Everyone join me in introducing and welcoming my guest for tonight. Hero, thank you for doing the podcast. How are you doing this evening? Yo, what you know, it's your boy One Hero. And today I'm back with Crypt on the un- Unfiltered. Yeah, uploaded Unfiltered. Uploaded and Unfiltered podcast. So uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, no problem at all. I'm glad to have you. I, I say this a lot and people are going to get tired of it, but I don't care. <laughs> When I started this podcast, uh, you were definitely somebody on my list. And I, I don't even, you probably don't remember this, but this was from back, I think I first saw your content on TikTok. TikTok. And it was like, I don't even remember what you were talking about, but it, it resonated with me. And I'm like, oh yeah, this dude's dope. Followed you there. And then I stalked you on Twitch. And then I'm like, oh, we know some of the same homies. Yeah. All right, cool. And I've been been here ever since. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. I, I haven't had the chance to be on many podcasts, so I appreciate any time that anybody uh, develops or brings out to give me that time of day. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem at all. I'm glad to have you. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and ask my favorite question. What is Hero's origin story when it comes to content creation? So funny enough, this dates back way beyond where I used to do things like record wrestling matches or even the one-on-one competitions I would have with my brother or when I would have all my friends over for Perfect Dark on 64. We used to record those things on v- on VHS, on blank tapes, yeah. on, on VCR back then. It was really fun to do, but I was always more of a person that was interested in creating more than gaming. Me and my cousin, mm-hmm. we play games like San Francisco rush, but we would act like we were playing Grand Theft Auto before Grand Theft Auto came out type of thing. We were and we were getting out of pretending we were getting out of the car to go to the beach to mack on the ladies or whatever, or going to get mm-hmm. a burger and fries from the restaurant. So I've <laughs> always been having my hand in creating, whether it was with content for gaming, but, but originally uh, what started me on the internet for creating was my manga, my webcomic that I made. Oh, okay, nice. So can you speak on that a bit? How long did the web comment run for? Or is it still running? It's not running anymore. So I had come up with this idea one night when I was sitting in the Xbox party of what if I just told a story? Because I was a big fan of anime and I thought to myself, what if I told a story from my perspective on some of the things that I know and love? You know, Avatar mm-hmm. and Naruto were some of the bigger influences at that time. So I thought, well, how hard it could really be? And little did I know, it would be very hard to do. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's funny enough because I had a friend of mine at the time who no longer is a friend of mine for this specific reason. Okay. He looked at me and said, "How do you think you're going to be able to do that? What, Why? What, oh. what, in what Ooh. world do you think that you could pull that off?" Ooh. And those Ooh. words seeped into my veins like venom from a snake. And yes. out of spite, I said, "I'm going to show you." And Thank I you. sure as hell yes. got up on it. I got on the internet. I went to DeviantArt and I scoured for hours. No rhyme intended mm-hmm. until I mm-hmm. found a person by the name of Riza. They were in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, they helped me to get some of the things started with planning out the pages. And then long story short, because of the massive monsoons that hit, they were always delayed. So I had to find somebody else. And this is when I was led to the team of Tanya. And Carolyn, aka Beer Dorado. I worked with that team exclusively together in their first time working with anybody to do a manga or webcomic. And it was very, very good up until Carolyn, aka Beer Dorado, who was the main artist, I started losing sight in her eye. Oh no. I didn't find out about it until it was too late. Right. And she was willing to back off and leave the project. So I was trying to do a mm-hmm. weekly webcomic with multiple pages to keep the readers coming in. And it was very, very uh, a trying time, but it was a well-learned lesson where I took time over myself to practice drawing. And that simply taught me 
Hero, stop being an a-hole and asking these people to do the impossible within a few days. You, and I learned my lesson and it put me in my place. I humbled myself, but I was also humbled by them. And I told them I was appreciative of you putting your foot in my butt to let me know mm -hmm. that you were asking for the impossible, regardless if I was paying for it or not. So I, I love that experience. I love that moment. And that got us that got us going closer. But I think that at the time, the fatigue of trying to do something like that for them being their first time caught up which led me to right. find Sebastian and Sayo. Sayo, I still talk to to this day. Sebastian, we were cool. Uh, it was it was weird, just a little sidetrack, that every artist I worked with from my very, very first artist that helped me develop the characters by the name of Leah Perone Pichon, uh, she's now married with child, so she doesn't do commission work anymore, so I did lose her. But he was the first person that believed in me and took a chance on me and helped me create my characters yeah. and bring them to life. I'll never be, I'll never forget that. And I'll always be eternally grateful for her. Mm -hmm. But I had a person that was following behind me trying to work with every artist that I did because they had a hard time. Wow. As well. Leah, turned, Leah turned them down. Now, funny enough, right? I work with Sebastian. I work with C Sayo. And Sayo had a whole art studio. So I was working as a full on production company out of my own pocket, out of my own house, trying to make this happen. Mm -hmm. Working at GameStop as a, with a SGA or whatever you want to call it, a senior game advisor with $600 okay. trying to make a comic. So I was really making, I was rubbing pennies together to try to make a dime. Yeah. And we finally got the things done. It took four years. Four years? It took four years, 150, to, 150 pages, seven chapters, book printed. And I've sold over 100 copies today. That is amazing. I have a copy sitting right next to me as well. Yeah. That is that is so dope. I love that. And what's what's the name of the webcomic again? It's called Infinite the Journey. It's it's basically um never place limits upon yourself because you never know how your potential can be infinite. And this follows a story of a kid named Kao who didn't believe in himself and gets thrusted into this world of adventure where he has to become a hero to help the guardians of Zoria save it from destruction. But he's like the person the worst person to pick because he doesn't believe in himself. He's only duty is to be to his family, his brother and sister. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, you've got the guardians going, if you don't help us, then the big bad's going to come for you and then kill them and kill you. And then we're going to be doomed. So we need you type of thing. Right. Yo, that I vaguely remember in my snooping that you had a web webcomic, but the backstory on that is amazing. People mm -hmm. dream of trying to get their pieces of art together to put it into a book form and you it took four years but you got that you got it done two to four pages a month when we started out till i actually got a decent paying job and then i was able to do like five to ten pages and things like that and then eventually i got to the point where i tried to kickstarter the kickstarter failed and then mm -hmm. when i finally got the book done and everybody was ready for volume two that same artist, that same person trying to get their story done following up behind the artist yeah just so happened to befriend an NBA player who had a lot more money than me and took Sebastian, the artist, from my production team. Are you serious? Then went on for a year with him to produce. Basically, this guy had a lot of money. He was in the anime. He basically just came in and bought up all of the artists to work on his stories, not theirs. Once his stuff was done and he was ready to pitch it to try to get it to Netflix or whatever, then he let them, he let them do their story stuff. And I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting that you let that happen but then after mm -hmm. that they come knocking on my door you, do you still want to sell infinite and i was like i'm not selling it they said well we'll give you money to bring it on board and we'll publish it i said sure huh. that lasted about okay. three months because i got no production and like i told you earlier i'm i'm a type of person where i don't sit idly by and wait and if i smell bs is coming i'm going to call bs yeah. i'm going to call yeah. and you're going to have to show me your cards they showed me the cards and it was pretty much like a sympathy thing like sorry we took your guy but we wanted to help you out. First of all, I don't need money or a handout from you. I did that for four years by myself out of my own pocket. I ran a business by myself and published a book. You can't take that from me and nobody ever will. But I'll take the $1,000 you're going to give me, though, for my book. And I'll go ahead and kindly end my contract to keep it moving. Here you go. Is that company still thriving? No, I'll let you find out. <clears throat> Yo, hey, hey. Woo, if I had an air horn, this is where I would put the air horn at. It would go right here because that was ridiculous, man. Yeah, and I don't want you to think that I'm being arrogant or whatever. It's just that I've I've had that I've had that in my life where people think that I'm this arrogant, cocky, 
prick or yeah. persona. And it's just like, mm-hmm. if you knew what I went through, if you know what I've had to work for, you feel the same way too, because nobody's ever going to step on you. Exactly. Listen, you're talking to someone who's been called cocky or overconfident. So I understand, like, it's just you're confident in who you are. You know what you want out of life and you're not going to settle for less. Like, that's something to be admired. Yeah. And I'm pretty I'm I'm hoping you could understand this. I'd rather you or anybody that's ever come across me in my life know exactly how I felt, how I thought right then mm-hmm. and there. That way you could never sit back a year from now and go, damn, I didn't know how Hero thought about me or felt about me or how he. I'd rather you know so that way you can legitimately hate me or legitimately yeah. respect me and love me. Yeah. I I just had a conversation yesterday uh, on a podcast about finding people who are genuinely there for you. And like you said, being straight up and honest from the get go is one way you can weed out the people that don't really rock with you. And that's it works every time. It's so rare. <laughs> it's so rare to have that 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 skill to be like, hey, this is who I am no bs you rock me you don't that's it it came it came from my high school days as, as as i was dating quite often i would tell a girl that i know how to describe everything like as this i know how the i know the blueprint to my plane i'm gonna hand it over to you i want you to observe it aka while we're dating to see if you can fly this now if you can mm-hmm. fly this or if you're willing to give it a shot then cool but if we crash and it's because you were being careless then we have a discussion we try to pick it back up and keep flying and when I was explaining that, they're like, so basically you're telling me in a metaphorical way, you understand what you want and need in life from your significant other. And you're going to tell me and, and, and help me understand and learn these things. And then if I choose to do it, good. And if not, then you go. I'm like, yes, I want you to know what you're saying no to and know what you're saying yes to. And that, that transfers over to any and everything. Every, every relationship. Absolutely. Friendship, business ship, you better be yeah, anything. Twitch ship. Yeah. And Twitch, yo, know, that <laughs> needs to be a thing. If that's not a thing, that needs to be a thing. A Twitch ship, because there's yeah. a lot of those out here. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, Matt. Hero, that was dope. Thank you for uh, diving into that uh, awesome tale of your origin story and that bonus of the webcomic. I'm excited to read it. I'm going to go ahead. It's a, I can still buy it, right? Uh, So basically, COVID messed up everything with printing, so I don't know Man. if they're back yet. So gotcha. I, okay. I, I, and I haven't checked. I need to check with them because I know that it's basically print on demand. If I have pe- people go, I, I want to, I want 10 of your books. Okay. Then I'll put in an order for 10. You pay for them. I get them shipped. Then I ship them out to you. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, if, if I, if I may, just my last little thing, if you will, I apologize. No, go ahead. I started, playing, I started playing Call of Duty Black Ops 4 summer mm-hmm. of 2019. I enjoyed it a lot. And I was having a lot of great clips. I was having a lot of great moments and I'm like, all right, bet this is the game. And I would try to use the theater mode to save my clips and my moments. What happened was the game would always crash or it would never get the clip that I needed. So I'm working 11 to nine or nine to seven in a furniture mm-hmm. store. I had very little time. I said, so I can't record this stuff to put on YouTube. I'm going to stream it. That way from now on, if I have a dope moment, <laughs> I don't have to worry about it being missed. And that's what my started my streaming journey from Call of Duty. Beforehand, I did 2K. When I was a yeah. top 100 crew with my created character, with my other friends, we did all of that. Then I came back to doing Devil May Cry, DMC, the one people don't want to talk about. I used to make my stream name was Dante Makes the Devil Cry. And then I did Apex <laughs> one time, which I actually have that uh-huh. bot saved still. And then yeah. Call of Duty and then everything else because I couldn't do Overwatch. My computer couldn't do it. If I had my, if I could do it all over again, I would have started with Overwatch, then Call of Duty, then on to where we are now. Just so you know, sorry. That's awesome. So basically, you you started streaming because you're like, I can't catch these clips. If as long as the VOD's there, the clips will be there. I'm telling you, man. And then I started streaming, and I got a lot of them clips. And then yeah, yeah. The <laughs> yes, that is awesome. I love that. I love that. That's probably I have I have yet to hear someone's uh, origin story be the same they're always some weird variation of oh my boy gave me this computer and i said hey get stream i guess i'm gonna start streaming it's like what mm-hmm. that's how you started yeah. all right cool welcome it helped me lean more into it too because i was doing improv before all of this over in canada with my ex-girlfriend but then we broke up she took the playstation i came back and i was like you know what streaming could probably help me sharpen my skills too so it's like yeah and now i can i get to do a lot of improv currently with the current project too which i'm if you ask about that we can talk about that then yo we're definitely gonna get into it <laughs> but let's do this let's jump into current mindset in regards to the content you're making now the content you want to make in the future 
what is your current mindset like? What does that look like for you? If I'm being honest, I think for me, I've let go a lot of the extra baggage that I created for myself when starting because the pressure was put on me that I was a caliber of a person to make it, to be famous, to be partnered. And every day people come in and go, I don't know how you are, how you are, how you're not. And I'm like, I, I could sit up here and come up with a million reasons. COVID happened. Yeah. We, had, we had an M plus, mm -hmm. we had a sur surplus of 1.5 million streamers that took over the world and now it's it's hella saturated nobody wants to hear that because then i'm the a-hole for telling the truth but it's reality that the 100 viewers that you could use are all spread apart of everybody that we know and, and it's just it is what it is we can't tell people to stop streaming we can't tell people to stop doing this so long story short my mindset had switched from focusing on the things that i couldn't control mm -hmm. to what i could control and being more appreciative of the, the community the family that I've built here on Twitch mm -hmm. and my mindset has been focused on that. And I will say this to my, to my last day that I ever stream, if I ever do is that I don't care about having a check mark on any platform. I'm partnered to the community that shows up for me. They are my check mark. I'm verified by them. They go, they're the ones that go to comment. They're the ones that are in the stream. They're the ones that give money out of their hard earned paychecks to me on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on a semi-monthly basis. So I am partnered to them because there's one thing that I have always put in my mindset from now on. There's not a damn platform that can tell me my worth. Facts. Not a single one. And there's not a single number. I don't care if it's, I don't care if Ninja kicked in the door and said, you're trash, kid. I'd be like to you. <laughs> I'd be like to you, I am. But to everybody else, to everybody else that's in this room right now, I'm just as dope. I'm I'm the ninja to them. And I, I respect that and I admire that and I will always appreciate that and be grateful for that. So I went up, yeah. I went away, I went away from looking at numbers to looking at the people that are around me. And if they can make mm -hmm. me feel like they're, they're in this room with me and there's 30 people in this room with me, that makes me feel like it's 100, 1000, then I'm happy. And I'm at the current yes. mindset right now that creating what I'm creating and doing what I'm doing with the people that are around, I am grateful, I'm appreciative. And I'm happy despite all of the other BS that I've had to deal with over the four years from the backstabbing to the lying on my name, to the misassumptions, to all of that stuff. It, I would do it all over again and face those same foes, villains, obstacles, and everything else to be where I am right now. Cause I wouldn't think, I didn't think I was going to be here. I was ready to quit streaming last November. Wow. Really? And be done with it all together. Yeah. I just, mm -hmm. I was doing Rumbleverse. Rumbleverse was doing great, but the developers were oh, favoring yeah. that. They were favoring the higher viewer streamers and i'm like they don't care about the game they want the paycheck exactly and i'm tired I, I, and mentally as a creator i'm tired of having to deal with watching people tell me that i'm not good enough for them even though i'm putting out the same quality same thing i told Coburg. Coburg didn't get invited to the wwe 2k24 event and he has a higher viewership than one of the yeah. people that got invited kick rock i don't care if it's if i don't care if it's about who you know and all that other gibber gabber jibber jabber like mm -hmm. th those days are over with of, of the big streamers it, it, that can control things right Crip, you're just as good as them you have the same quality you have a better voice you have everything that you need to be a partner level streamer they just need to give us a chance and find a way to do it oh we'll do a youtube and all like <laughs> at the end of the day when it comes to the extra bs and the fluff of streaming i'm done with it mm -hmm. be real with me be upfront with me or or we don't have nothing to talk about cuz i'm over it yeah i agree and i to your point to rumbleverse like what you were doing with smooth johnson like bro i i tell oh. you this from from the outside looking in i thought you was working with rumbleverse everybody did bro from the quality to the storylines to the the oh like i didn't even I, I this is where i was at i didn't give a damn about that game i was an unofficial spokesperson i didn't care about it at all but your content came up on my uh, TikTok. i'm like i'm watching this oh smooth johnson's here bet it was hilarious oh that that's up that upsets i don't want to say it upsets me but that sucks that they didn't do what they were supposed to pull you in and who knows what it would happen i had to fight for a custom access key they didn't believe in me until until the community manager came over to my TikTok and saw me streaming it he's like mm -hmm. does that number say ten thousand? i said you damn right that's ten thousand yeah, people watching yeah, smooth yeah. Johnson, like stop playing with me bro like exactly and and, and, that, and then and then he goes can you give me the can you give me the stats on your TikTok streams i said yeah he looked at them and said Oh, I said, yes, every streamer you pr promoted for Rumbleverse, I'm doing better than. Exactly. I'm doing Maximilian dude numbers on on TikTok for Rumbleverse and y'all playing with me. Like, 
I can help you. And no, I'm and then they're like, well, and, and honestly, Rumble Versus wasn't even their decision. It was the lead guy that was a, it was in with all of the fighting game people, and then it was Epic. Epic, like we don't care who you are. We don't have a wow. YouTube. We don't have a Twitch presence. We don't care. Gotcha. Until he showed them the numbers, and they were like, okay, we'll give him the access code. But then two months later, they close out the game. So I'm like, I'm like, you didn't give Maximilian, dude. You didn't give Northern Line. You didn't give none of the big streamers that access. You gave it to your best friends. And what did they do? Are they still streaming to this day? They quit streaming once that happened. Then I'm just like, that's what I meant when I said I was done. I was like, I'm ready to go. And yeah. If you're telling me my content and what I do ain't worth the damn, and I'm gonna deal with that. And that's what I got to deal with, or I got to like put up and shut up all the time. No, nah, bro, y'all mm-hmm. can have it. I'll go be a monk and, and find my <laughs> Zen before I let anybody else tell me I'm not worth yeah. it. Anymore. Like, I'm done with all of that. Four years, I, I know what I'm doing and I'm a damn good at it. So y'all need to recognize it or not. Right. You know what? This is a perfect segue to lessons learned because. I, I, for one, if I have nobody else's, I'm sure your community has told you this. I didn't know it was that dire in November. I'm still, I'm glad you're still doing what you do because your voice is needed. Your content is great and that's, it's going to pay off. So I appreciate you and the work that you're doing, but lessons learned. What have you learned during the course of your content creation? I know this is going to be fire that you have taken maybe into other parts of your content creation or, or even into real life. A lot of my lessons that I've learned have been hard learned. Trusting people, surrounding myself with more streamers than I did viewers is a is a big one. I would tell that to any aspiring streamer that it's very fun to have a lot of people around, but you have to understand two things if you go that route. One, they're not always going to be able to be there. And then two, you think any Hollywood director is friends with a bunch of directors and then inviting them to watch <laughs> their movie on launch day? They can't because guess what they're doing? Making a movie. They're directing their own movie. So I was like, okay, that's a lesson that I learned is that it's not about the expectation of the streamers being there. It's just being realistic with yourself on what expectation is going to happen, being friends with a lot of streamers. Two would be to, it's very important to stay in your, stay in your focus on what you want to do. Because if you try to do what everybody else is doing, oh, I see a lot of the black streamers that are trying to get partnered on YouTube. So I'm going to go do YouTube. What if YouTube isn't your thing? Mm -hmm. Hell, what if streaming isn't your thing? A lot of people are spending a lot of time trying to become a streamer because it's fun to do. It's easy to do. The the door to entry is, is low. Sure. But what if you're missing out on being one of the world's best writers or best doctor or best mechanic because you want to do the easier route? So for me, it's like, I've learned through this, I love video editing and creating. So if I find any game that allows me to do that, like Rumbleverse did, that's what opened the door for me to realize I love editing. So if I were to take anything to be for a job for me, it would be to edit or to create and manage something like I'm doing right Mm -hmm. now with my EOV wrestling show like Holberg does. I Right. Yeah. And then I found out from that, an actual holster or shoutcaster was like, you'd be really good at shoutcasting. So I'm like, oh, well, here... Here we go. Like my improv yeah. comedy, my improv comedy is coming back into play with mm-hmm. me being able to be a shoutcaster. I just got to find out how to where I would go, how to do that, and stuff like that. So, I would say just try everything, and then be yes. honest with yourself at the end that if it's for you, it's for you, and if it's not, it's not, and that's it's not the end of the world. Yeah, exactly. I think to your point, trying everything is how I got to this. Basically, like. Yes, streaming's dope, and I enjoy streaming, and now I have put streaming in its two-day slot. I know those days I'm streaming, and when I'm not streaming, I'm not thinking about it because I love talking to people. I love getting people engaged in conversations, and for the most part, I love, like, and everything you've been saying is things that have been on my mind. I love when people realize their worth. Like, when you realize that, nobody can tell you anything negative comments like negativity you're not hearing it because you know who you are and that's so hard to come across like once you finally realize this is who i am this is the content i make nothing anybody can say is going to stop you you want to know what movie solidified that for me and it's funny that i don't think many people will actually like i look at movies differently from messages same thing with games the greatest showman okay oh yeah that movie was great well, Hugh Jackman. Yeah, that message alone was you can go through all of the all ups and downs or whatever, but yep. even the main song, This Is Me. Well, he went out, he tried everything 
and he went out and found out he learned his lessons and everything like that and he pursued his passion and it, and it worked yeah but he did it to be happy not to be famous not to find that and when he tried to go for fame look what happened mm -hmm. that's dope i didn't even think about it. i love that movie didn't even correlate that lesson right there all right hero we're gonna jump into it i'm a new streamer or I'm somebody who's just started or I've been doing it for a, a few months and I'm getting a little discouraged. What type of advice would you give either one of those people, the same person? Who do you want to speak to and what advice would you give to them? So I, I have, I've had this conversation with the most recent streamer that's a partner streamer. He was asking me about if I started over, what would I do differently? And two things that I didn't think that would really work or that could really be good for you starting out. One committing to one game uh, people tell you oh play what you want absolutely if you don't care about growing which is 100 percent true if you do not care about growth <laughs> yeah. if you are okay with sitting there with 10 viewers five viewers 15 one and you're enjoying yourself mm -hmm. just give zero f's about what the world thinks and what it looks like enjoy yourself i did it no matter how many races exactly. came in there and made names and called me that because i beat them in call of duty I was having the time of my life. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And then when I realized that this could be a thing, the two things that I didn't do was one niche niching down on a game because what happens, right? Is, is yes, yes, you're limited in growth, but you're sharpening your skills, how to talk to chat, how to read chat. And then on top of that, the second part of it is making content off stream, no 18 hour streams, no eight hour streams, yeah. because you could make more money passively doing less work on YouTube than streaming 18 hours on Twitch. Easy. And it's evergreen content. It's, it's, it's literally, I, my, mm -hmm. my final fantasy 14, I started a final fantasy 14 YouTube and I said, I'm going to dedicate just straight up 14 only nothing else, nothing less. Okay. And I said, I'm going to try this. I'm going to yeah. try this. I haven't done it. I was against it. I'm not going to worry about it. It caught my main channel of four years in one year. Get out of here. It, 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 in view and, and watch hours and interactivity on the stream and everything on, on the YouTube itself. It has surpassed it. It had one video pop off for 18,000 views after three weeks of me posting it. And then ever since then, it's been nonstop nice just going great it's at like 500 something subscribers where i have the other one at 800 but it's dead as a doorknob but what i learned with the other one i did too many uh, variety things right when i when i niched down to overwatch when i was trying to get back into it and i did the overwatch updates and things like that those videos and shorts mm -hmm. are still popping on that channel even though it's dead and discombobulated so it lets me know on YouTube, if you niche down specifically, find a category that you really love and do, you can do it. Same thing on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I did Rumbleverse. I did, I'm going all in on Smooth Johnson's tutorial content, and it carried me to 7,000 followers, over 1 million views. It, it worked. That's awesome. So if I had to go through all the extra fluff, if you made it to this part, I would say, one, don't stream as much. If you really, really enjoy and want to grow, make content off the platform that you can be proud of that you will love no matter how good it will do because that will bring people to you and then play what you want on stream or focus on one game and allow that to hone your creative skills as a creator and then you move on to the next game and the next category until you've tried everything like we said earlier try everything mm -hmm. main theme song for zootopia by the way for the parents out there that have that have kids that like zootopia <laughs> It's called Try Everything? Yeah. It's Shakira. Try everything. Yeah. I have not seen that movie. You know what? Yeah. I'm going to ask the kids tomorrow. I'm like, y'all seen Zootopia? And they're yeah. like, yeah, of course. I won't give I up. I won't give in. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's literally telling you, just try everything. That's dope. I like that. That's a good message. All right. You got that. Listen, you put a bow on that. I feel like starting over, niching down, and then moving, trying everything is something I didn't do when I first started. And it's definitely, if I lost my mind was like i'm gonna start a new twitch channel that's exactly what i would do i pick one game this is what i'm playing for six months oh stream on youtube oh true i don't care what anybody says stream on youtube anybody you see that made partner they streamed on youtube and they won't tell you that if they won't tell you that i'm telling you that that's how they got it because those because your twitch vods don't carry your youtube stream vods they do and they go into the algorithm mm-hmm 
like do this like take whatever your twitch streaming is for the week do that over in youtube well you can restream now yeah you can restream now you, you without getting in trouble you can literally set it and it's free it's not even though it says it's paid it's free you can set up restream and you can stream both to it you can stream to both of them exactly and you can switch it if you have three channels you can switch it in restream i want to stream final fantasy 14 this day i want to stream wwe this day on my variety mm -hmm. channel i'm just effing off playing zelda wind waker or super mario uh sunshine i'm going to switch it over there gems because once you look at the vod on youtube and you know you realize that oh this is getting traction two three four weeks it, after yeah. i did the live and that goes to your watch hours. That's how you get again. That's how you get partnered. Ah, oh my goodness, yo, y'all better I, this year. I better see a lot more of y'all content creators stepping outside of Twitch and start looking into putting your content elsewhere because it, it's that's scary because you, you see social media and and, and nope, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> nope. No. Mm -mm. I, All right, cool, I, cool. I have this I have this very side of me that I feel like if I ever just like really just like remove my unfiltered, if you will. Yeah, I would get I would get canceled because I, I just there's a lot. There's a lot that I see. There's a lot that I, I, I witness. There's a lot that I watch go on. And there's a lot of people blind to it. And it's especially among our people. And it bothers me to this to, to this day. And I'm just like, if I say anything, I know I'm going to get crucified on Twitter because that's what's happened to people in the past when they've spoken up and just asked question or said something and i'm like why is it that mm -hmm. the other the other walks of life don't have this issue mm -hmm. on that note where can the people find your content hero so right now i'm doing basically my main content is wrestling wwe 2k23 is by the name of era of valor wrestling mm -hmm. i do that on my main channel twitch.tv slash i am one hero but that's that one and then it's eov wrestling tv on youtube but then i also have i am one hero on TikTok, and then the hero of light on youtube as well for final fantasy 14. but if you go to my twitter which is i am one hero underscore mm -hmm. you can find my media kit that has pretty much all of my links right there because i have a lot of different channels and like i said i'm trying everything so <laughs> yes good good go get yourself invested go check out his wares again i would recommend going to the media kit because that has everything and then you can just be nosy like me also let me go ahead and give my shout out to the podcast if you know any other creators out there who could benefit from conversations like these and more uh please share the podcast with them uploaded and unfiltered i'm on your podcast catcher of choice leave me a review let me know how we're doing and if you know anybody who could like be a guest on this show that's super dope and entertaining to talk to hit me up let me know who they are and i will get them on other than that, Hero, thank you again for this conversation. All right, everybody out there, remember, protect your mental, keep creating content, and I will talk to you on the next one. Peace.